Namaskar, it's me, Rajesh. It's the 5th of February, 2024. It's about quarter past 4 p.m. I'm going home from work here. As you can see, this is the road, a beautiful, this is a new back road that's leading from Sheriff Street, from my area, straight down to the workplace. So it's a one-way drive and good quality road, good for my tires and so. It's a pleasant afternoon, very sunny and so. Now I'm gonna talk, I wanna say that when you're doing yoga and if you lead in the religious life, you know, you have to follow the yama and niyamas. These are good conduct, like reading good boats, keeping good company, cleanliness, but if you're living in a hot climate, you bathe two times a day. If cold climate, three times a day. And these are very essential to help the meditation when, or to help the spiritual life so that you can get the spiritual feelings or you could get a mood for spiritual life and these kind of things, you know. Well, if you keep bad company and you hear coursing and filthy language, and I, you know, if you have a companion who's coming to your house and he's talking about just women, the woman, the woman, and he's telling you all, talking about bad language and so, despite coming from a, a like foreign country like India or America, it's not very conducive, you know. The Guru said, those kind of company, we have to relinquish them, you know, we have to give them up. And even though you may living in a totally Indian community, which is like your own people, you know, you find that sometimes you find yourself with the least among them. I think it's uh, the onus of the community to see that the welfare of its people, the elements within that society is nurtured and given good company and good um, pastime activities and good food for thoughts, you know. You just, um, it's not good to leave young children and young boys, girls at the mercy of bad company, of bad neighbors, of bad people, bad environment, so they get tempted and lured into the lanes of alcohol and cigarettes and drugs and crime and so on. So many we have here, many innocent people. <laughs> They are being lured into a life of crime, bad company, alcohol, and so on, you know. So that's unconsciously because what the company, the environment doesn't provide the proper satsang, the proper company, you know, for people to uh, feast and enjoy proper and healthy free times and pastime activities and so on. So what happened is that many youngsters are destroyed very young age. We cannot, we're not having very good saintly characters, communal people of moral characters, strong people and so because the negative is more than a positive. So people have been, the people is coming down with a terrible contagion, a terrible flu of fever, of sickness, of negativity. So what happened is that Yogis now have to conceal themselves, so they have to hide away from public to protect themselves so that they can do sad. Now, why we do sad now? Because we want the mind to be creative, we want the mind to become fort, and we want to have mystical experience. We want to see angels, deities, we want to have uh, ecstasy, what they known as union mystical, go up into the higher planes, converse, become creative, men of science, art, business, all these things can avail, avail to our youth. If they um, pursue the spiritual path, you know, they will develop many talents. Their body will change, will become healthy, strong, handsome, beautiful people. All these are blessings for our spirituality. You see, that's why you have the Mongol countries in Asia, and some of the other Middle Eastern Muslim country in the early day, pre-Islamic days and so on. They saw the importance of these religious cults, culture, religious life, way of life. So what they did, they invited monks <laughs> and they invited people who can bring culture, who could bring um, something good, do something good for the country. Like China invited 
many Buddhist monks and so we have a Buddhist culture there in China, in Taiwan, in Tibet. They were all open. You know, in fact, when um, I think it was the Bodhisattva Shantidev Pandit who went to Tibet and took Buddhism there. I can't really remember the name, but where he was going there, right? They said the land was filled with demons of all kinds. And one of them threatened to kill him and he said, look, I have a mantra. I'm going to repeat the sacred word. I will blow your head into 1,000 pieces. Then the demon, which was known as Nai Chong, he bowed down to the Bodhisattva, this Indian monk from India, and begged him to spare him. So these monks and saints in India, they have great powers because they have mantras. And they have powers that can tame animals, lions, wild beasts, demons, spirits. India and Africa and Israel, many of the ancient land they are being um we have very invisible beings and supernatural beings and entities that are walking those lands, you know. And that's still happening in Africa and India. Hopefully the modern lifestyle, a modern way of life will not take these away, you know. So we see that these people are kind of like different. They have qualities and culture that is passed on and given to them from generation to generation and so on. <laughs> so this is something very good, you know, that even though the people are ignorant, like in Guyana, or the, they are not no, have spiritual knowledge in terms of ignorance. They don't have, um, they know how to, the wisdom and the ancient, technology to alleviate many of the miseries that we would find in other places. So um, they have all this knowledge and most of them are being utilized properly. They are being given to them sometimes by visitations, by um, encounters, strange encounters and so on. So we have the knowledge is there and people who are wise and leaders who are wise, they've been inviting missionaries inviting and I have respect for these people because of the ancient history of their nation, their culture. So they invite whenever they meet a good yogi and a genuine yogi, they would like to meet him. They want to chat and talk and centers open up and the people benefit, you know, and so on. So this is what happens like in Japan when Yogeshwar and Nan Paramahansa, Yogeshwar and Nan Saraswati, from the Yoga Nikitan Ashram. He was went to Japan and he did a lot of work here. He visited Guyana also in the 70s. And I read in the Himalayaka Yogi Part 2 book that he initiated many people here, but unfortunately I never met those people, but probably the seeds he planted give birth to some good citizens, people who later became productive and useful for the country. I mean, um, in my family, from where I came from, the people are more intellectually um, given. They're not this kind of pandit and religious type, though the tradition is there from my, they do religiously, traditionally once a year, they do jandhi and so. But mostly the technological, the Western technology is drawing them and pulling them and so on, you know. So um, what happened is that if people who are getting into yoga and their religious life, going to church regular, join the satsang of a temple, the neighborhood temple and so, they will find a little difficulty and into this new life, you know. One of my um, paternal uncle-in-law, he's now a swami in Australia. He went by the name of Yogi Shyam Sundarakon to my uncle. I met him once also in Danra Street, he visited Guyana, he was from the Divine Life Society. And he was in a material life but slowly changed and he became a yogi for the Divine Life Society. He made many cassettes, song cassettes and did some work and so on. Now I heard he's a Swami. At this age he gave renounce and he became a Swami and so on. So that's very good, I must compliment him on taking this life. Oh, wow. Yes, 
So what I'm saying is that if you're living in a community, right, you have to follow the, the Yamas and the Niyamas, the Ten Commandments, the Hindu Ten Commandments. And we're part of it, you can't curse, you can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't keep bad company. You can't waste your time, you gotta read good books, you gotta go to church regularly, you gotta sing bhajans, you gotta pray. And you got to become like these holy men, you know? But when you have another force or another power that is retarding, it means you begin to feel like the society is not helping you. People are not aware of the danger of living an immoral life or living an antisocial life. They don't understand the fine things of ethics and culture. They don't promote it. Right, so we have we have to follow these fine teachings, no? So it's very important people should try to understand Namaskar.